ladies and gentlemen, get ready for combos. Well, let's see how long the opponent lets us do cool things. Triggers. What is happening? Commanders. <laughs> In my opinion, the most broken deck you're going to see. Monkey. This is Historic Brawl. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, I am in here to show you the power of green storm combo. Mythweaver Pock is the most busty degenerate thing to come out of alchemy since Rusko Clockmaker. And just like Rusko, it is at its best in a totally nasty, completely ruthless storm build. So this deck can absolutely run its land count up to a million and generate constant, seemingly endless mana, similar to the way that the standard decks can do it, but with more different and more busted interactions. Aftermath Analyst and Nissa Resurgent Animist are doing this job in standard but here in brawl we also have access to cards like azusa's many journeys and ramanach excavator to use fetch lands like wood uh, foothills and windslept teeth out of our graveyard again and again generating millions and billions of mana and what can you do with millions and billions of mana i'm not gonna lie Sometimes we just use the win con that's easy and right in front of us by using cards like Finale of Devastation to fetch up Crater Hoof Behemoth or End Raise Forerunners, especially if our Myth Weaver Pock doesn't need some help with the haste. You know, you just go get your big thing, give it trample and win. But there are also situations where we don't have that haste and we need a different combo approach. And that's where Altar of Dementia comes in clutch. It is insanely fun to play a myth weaver pock sack it to altar of dementia to mill a whole bunch of cards into your graveyard replay your myth weaver pock uh cast something along the lines of a world shaper maybe you tootle tutor up a world shaper there you are when it dies return all land cards from graveyard to battlefield sack it to your altar return all the lands from the graveyard to the battlefield double down with myth weaver pock now the myth weaver is like a 20 something if you do this again maybe it's a 40 something then you sack the myth weaver pock target the opponent mill them out then cast this from command sack it again that's a mill for 80 mono green mill they never see it coming even if they try to manage your battlefield and keep you off of a crater hoof win con you can still just beat them out of nowhere if you generate enough mana that's what the deck is all about we have all of the doublers and triplers we have nissa who shakes the world we have big sexy voren Klexi. we have the nix bloom ancient and if these things oh yeah virtue of strength as well and if these things don't win you over if you're still like uh big green stuff one more thing we have a whole bunch of cards like Last March of the Ents and Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishgar's Expertise that let you draw cards equal to the power of a creature you control. You know how big Myth Weaver Pock gets? Do you know? Have you? If you've never seen it, you don't know. I I got excited about like three mana draw two. What do you think of five mana draw twenty? No questions. Thank you to the sponsors of this video, CoolStuffInc.com and Ultimate Guard. Please check out the sponsors. Hit the link in the description. Let's dive in. Let the pocket nonsense begin. Under play, Halfling. We're up against Booty Matters, Pride of the Whole Clade. It wants to draw 15 cards. Maybe I'll try it someday. I just don't believe. It's too crazy. Like, the dream is too big. But we'll see what our opponent has in mind. I'm not going to stop him. Honk, honk. Restoration. We want to save that until our commander's on the field. Let's play the halfling because they're playing blue. Pass the turn. What you got? It's too easy toughness on turn one. It gets cheaper for the toughness. They just want to get more toughness. Nice. They got their fetches. Kalan. And the land drop. All right, it's real. I don't have any artifacts that they can victimize, though. And a wall of blossoms, okay. Oh, they are cooking. They are cooking with gas. Bring forth the Myth Weaver. Let's get ramping. 
What are we looking for with invasion? Lotus Cobra? Nissa? If we have the extra mana. They play Kellen, they pass. Razor. Hmm. All right. If we restoration, we get three lands. Three mana in, three mana out, and three mana up. And then what do we invade for? I wish I could just invade for the Cobra first, then at restoration. But then I do miss with the Pock. Uh, but you know what? Let's do it like this. Come on out to play, Nissa. We'll have a good time. Triggers. Provisioner. Love that. Absolutely love that. I did want to hold up the mana to restoration on the opponent's turn, though. So maybe we just save this provisioner. We can graze. Declare war on the invasion of Ikoria. Anybody want to block? Or may I have this 8 8 that says you don't block? Defenders not blocking is kind of cringe. And we got a chumpin' goose past turn. Uh oh, I see you. I'm just going to do this now. Triggers! And what's important, does our Nissa hit anything useful? Oracle of Moldiah is a good card. But none of these are a card advantage machine, and maybe our invasion of Ikoria should have fetched something to keep the card advantage going. Nissa might still hit. Right now, that's our best source of things. Myth Weaver is a really easy way to have a high toughness for pride. So the 215 is here and the opponent has the ability to give something next turn unblockable and draw cards when it hits. We'll go to 28. Land off the top, huh? Oracle. Second field, and come on, big hits. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Triple mana is not bad. Unfortunately, I still don't have an outlet for it. But we can make a lot of food, so it's hard to kill us. Oh, there's the altar. It's right there on top. Do I draw you? 15-15 coming in. I just want to unlock this invasion. Would love to use field on their turn. Get another activation, but I don't want to get rid of the altar. Opponent might draw way too many cards here. Or not. They've chosen defense. Eat the food in response to the Kellen. Just in case they wanted to activate the pride afterwards, but I bet they have a cyclonic rift. Obviously, they're saving mana for something. An 017! What? What? Ah, uh, yeah. That's a lot of defense. Fortunately, we have altar. Let me show you how it goes. Please resolve. Please resolve. Thank you. First, we target ourselves. Go to command, Mythweaver. 
We're looking for the timeless witness. We got it. Okay. Now, do we have... We have a splendid reclamation down there. Gorgeous. Let's do this again. Play this. Land. Get the triggers. It's over. They just don't know. They will find out. Sage. Trust me, we can afford it. Replay. Bring out the witness. Right now, opponent might be thinking, what are they doing? I'll show you. Analyst. Trigger. Light him up. Uh, yeah, sure. I will copy a windswept heath in my opponent's graveyard with my echoing deeps. I'll name Artificer with my cavern of souls, because who cares? We'll put 34 landfall triggers onto the stack. Go, baby. Go, baby. Go, baby. Go, baby. Do you like speed? No, the inappropriate time. Forgive me, opponent. This might take a while. I have combos to execute. The Weaver makes copies of all of it. And in case you wonder, what is happening? Don't worry about it. I just like triggers. And I like roping myself out. Doing this 31 times. Wizards. Wizards. Where? When do we get the select all button? If I just... It would be pretty easy to implement, I think. If I just held this down... And a little thing, like when it says full control when you hold something down, popped up and said select all, question mark. And then you hover over and click that. That's doable, right? And then it could just go like everything else does. Same thing with this uh, treasure interface here. Just select all treasure. So that moments like this could be more fun. That said... We do get to wallow in the nonsense, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And there's nothing wrong with wallowing in some nonsense sometimes. Not everybody likes it. Not everybody has to like it. Not everything is about you. Sometimes it's about me. Okay, it's about me a lot. Time to fire at will. I can pay this. I can do this all day. But two shots should be enough with the Myth Weaver here. Look at him go! 34 cards. And this is why we don't need haste. This is the combo. The Holy Atheist. Happy Easter. I am recording on Easter. That is uh, not just that is not just to meme. Mystic. Oh, that's awesome. They use the omniscient sleeves. <laughs> sure. Ginny Fay, Jetmere second. Tokens that become dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. I guess we want to save this. Maybe our opponent will play a fetch land. Rawr! Didn't expect to be the beat down today. Elves and land tax. Ah, uh, you're gonna be triggering that land tax. Uh, lucky, lucky you. Well, if we play the Myth Weaver and they spend their turn removing it, they don't get to send out their commander, which buys us time in the future. 
I don't like that you're vulnerable to a lightning bolt, which this deck will surely have. They've only got one copy, right? Right. Gen A? No, no, no. Okay. Doors would have killed it anyway, but we still got no value. And they got out their commander. Everything is falling apart. Still no fetch lands. That's all right. Just stay alive. Just stay alive. You. Please stop. Okay, they didn't attack. That's something. Six mana can play Pock. I think we just want to do this. Get that land tax once and for all. Although I'm sure they've been paid in spades. This time we're trying to wait so we actually get value. Because we might be able to walk right into a tooth and nail. Which could end the game. Uh, okay. Curry Oak is very scary. There could be a combo with it, or they could just evolve it. Here comes the kitty. The, be the beatings are commencing. And they make a dog, I'm sure. I'm not sure what to do. I think I have to kill the Adeline. Trying to hang on to cast a crater hoof just doesn't seem probable. Yeah, this game has gone so badly. Could slam Nyx Bloom. See if we untap. It's an option. Oh God, if we had one more mana source, it would be so good. Instead, we can play Pock, play Deeps, make a copy of Deeps, does nothing. Holds up nothing. Could go get a Scoot Swarm. If this were a fetch land, I'd consider it. What, are we, what am I getting attacked for next turn? Let's hope we live. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, right there. That's fine. And they add to the clock. That's the question. They need three more damage. I untap with this. Can we combo for the win? I think we can. Put the lift right. That's not it. It's my turn. It's my turn. Okay, but what? How? How do we do it? We have to get out the pock, I'm sure. We want to tooth and nail for sure. Entwined. And we need landfall triggers to make way too much mana. So, Nissa Analyst? There's nothing in the graveyard, though. Nissa, yes. With no lands in the graveyard, the Analyst is not great. How do we get lands in the graveyard? What do we do here? What do we do here? What do we do here? Wait, are they tapped out? They're tapped low. I mean, it's quite possible that the two creatures just win the game. Yeah, they do. Oh, lame. I wanted to try to combo from this point, but comments are going to roast me. So I guess we just do this. Boring. <laughs> Boring, but busted. That would be a mountain. That 
Uh, it, you know, it, it, I kind of cheesed you. I cheesed you a little. They're, what a good sport. What a good sport. Right on. Well, again, that is also a thing that can just happen. Vraska Swarm's Eminence is four mana, five loyalty. Whenever a creature you control death touch does damage to a player or planeswalker, plus one, plus one counter, minus two, create an assassin with death touch. When this does damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. I have never seen this as a commander, not once. Okay, turn two ramp, I suppose we'll keep. Although you really want turn one ramp on the draw. And here come the death touch. Finn! That might just be game. Secret fin deck? Oh my god. What am I supposed to do about that? But it blight thank this draw is insane! I'm dead next turn? I am. I'm just dead? <laughs> nice keep. Uh we need to block. How do we do that? We could put out Mythweaver, but they all have Death Touch. So that's bad. And it's not just enough to block for a turn. We need to stabilize. I don't see a path to that. So let's get Blocker. That will get us to next turn. I don't know how we get past that. It doesn't seem realistic. Are, like, are you kidding right now? I'm dead. I'm just dead. There was nothing. I mean, if you stack this deck, I think that's how you'd stack it. I saw 15 health, dang it. Corvald. Orville Dangerous can also be built in kind of a stormy way, which we might do sometime on the draw again. No ramp again. How many mulligans? How many moles must a man mull down before you can call it a hand? That went way better than I thought it would. I... The answer, my friend, is a blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Oh, hi, Gallagreeters. We're so dead. We are ruined. But here's my druid class. I can gain some life. Are you impressed? They're going to have Korvold next turn. I'm not even going to be close to my four mana commander. They're going to have their five mana commander. That card's good. That card is a legit card. It's fine. We went out of nowhere, right? Of course, if our opponent interacts with us, things get dicey. Reverse is a powerful card. Shared summons can be the combination of Nyssa and Aftermath Analyst. Okay, they're not playing their commander this turn. They came up short on land. It happens sometimes. Not often, but sometimes. Monvuli Recluse cranking out some kittens. Let's go, kitty. Gotta be the Heath so that we can activate it on their turn. If they don't kill this right away, we get even more value. So you're telling me there's a chance. Bring him out. Don't kill the cat. Bring him out. Here we go. It is real. I guess with triggers on stack is when I should activate. If the opponent did Doomblade this in response, we just go do something else. 
All right, I need a regular forest here. I'm not using the mana. I can get the gate. And then we'll have enough forest to get the cabin next turn. It's fine. It, this is fine. I wasn't worried at all. Traverse the Outlands is fine. Do I need to crack this, actually? No, I can't. Right now, I can't play Scoot Swarm and Traverse anyway. Okay, I still have my commander. <laughs> That's good. That's really, really good. To the moon. We go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Uh, 2121, is this lethal? I think this is just lethal. <laughs> I have a response, I'm holding priority, thank you. It's very important that we get one more forest. Wouldn't want to miss a point of damage here. I will stop holding priority now. All right, I'm done. Boom! Rise, Phyrexia, and charge to victory. Missed one point of damage. Could have powered this up. <laughs> okay. Our opponent has acquired a food. Like, what do you need? You need a fatal push? So, sack this for black. See if you draw it. Yeah, do it. Do it. You have made Kite. You want two life there. You wanna you wanna play to your outs. I don't think it'll help. Yeah, they go for it. Everybody get in front of that cat. Yes. 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 You can't stop me. You can only hope to contain me. Care this, huh? Care this. Well, we have Cobra, so we keep. That's called a keeps. Ha, huh, you lost a life and I gained one. Who's who's winning? This guy. Did I make three colors? Silence. Damn wise. We are off to the races, aren't we? I mean, I'm guessing they have some amount of removal. I'm just not sure how much. Can't hurt too bad to have more lands ready to go. All right, commander in the house. I wonder, like, Kethis is known for being combo-centric. I wonder how quickly they can combo. Hi. A little awkward here, isn't it? No, it's not. Because we're not casting Mythweaver Pock. We're casting Primetime. Yay, castle. All right. What do we take? Let's get the Garden and the Nykthos. I could have gotten two of the sack lands, like Broker's Hideout, and played my commander. I wonder if I should have done that. But I am worried about it just getting removed. No value. But at this point, they have to remove prime time. Yeah, there's the swords. They're at 24. They have a Tashar. Ooh. Whenever you cast a historic spell, return a creature, man value three or less from graveyard to battlefield. 
Do I need to hoof them right now? And if I do, do they die? Everything will gain plus four, plus four. So that's four plus six, 10 plus six, 16 plus nine. 24, but they just need to block with one thing. And if they block with Sam, they get back with Tashar. The thing is, they're very close to popping off. What if everything had an extra bonus and they had to block more? Because I got out my Elvish Mystic. Hmm. I think we go for it. It's too bad I can't have one more mana for the lair. Turning it into a creature could be a banger. Hi. Fourteen, five, nineteen, then ten. Here we go. All right. We want to kill the Tachar for sure. And I, I yeah, Kethis lets them cast it from graveyard. I think we leave Sam because it returns it to hand. And they need the food to do it. They go to two. Well, that hoof wasn't lethal, but it did decimate their board. They're going to have a hard time comboing off from there, I think. Ramp into prime time into crater hoof. Good curve. Recommended. 10 out of 10. Oh, man. Deck just slaps. It just slaps you. Atraxa. Baddies versus baddies. Let's go. We graze. Let's get this outlook into that graveyard where it can be virtued back. This hand is all kinds of fast. Oh, it's a toxic Atraxa. Is there another kind? Shigex. They wouldn't remove this, would they? Let's save the gate to Matterhorn. Those gates can provide card advantage. And Shigeki can get these out of the graveyard, along with several other effects in the deck. Uh-huh. Grazer doing work. Fuck it up. Double gate. Given a long enough timeline, those can turn into important cards, though I don't know if we'll need it this game. We just ripped a prime time. So what does this do? When you proliferate, return it from graveyard to hand. Cornucopia. Okay. Prime time. Okay, bye. <laughs> They're getting absolutely dumpster rolled. <laughs> They can't even get a poison counter on me. I'm still at, I'm still at zero instead of 10. It, there's no good joke there. Aragorn, the uniter. Deck can slap. Do I have a way to open the graveyard, but if we find it, I guess summons can do it. Azusa goes crazy. Keep, I, you have to keep Lotus Cobra. Nissa, Lotus Cobra, Tireless Provisioner. You keep those hands if you can. Only a lack of land would stop me. Oh, don't you dare. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Got manatized by an Aragorn deck. It's fine. You have four colors and anything you want, and they're like, you know what I want to play? I want to play Mana Tithe. Could really use another land. I kiss my commander? They sure do. Why'd their voice change? Consistency. Okay. 
You. You. Might as well do it now. It begins. But let's see what our opponent can do. Need to fill that graveyard. Inga and Essica. So you become 9-9. Nine, nine. Creatures you control have vigilance. Add one mana color. Spend only to cast creatures. Whenever you cast a creature, three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it. Draw a card. Halfling. What a waste to have all that power and hit a plant. It didn't attack. So they're holding up something. Could be a wash away. Could be a swords. I think they'd have already used it if it was either of those. We absolutely must hit a land drop here. How do we do it? Paired summons doesn't get us something that gets us a land, not for one mana. We can monstrous fall our myth weaver as it is and draw six. We'd also play a world shaper and pass. Thing about that is the momentous fall and the world shaper can trigger it. Need to unlock this graveyard. Shared summons can do it. We could just pass shared summons and then next turn, yeah, kind of go crazy. They're, so, they're holding up something anyway. And they didn't attack last turn. Still at 25. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Summons gets us Excavator and Nyssa. With the Fabled Passage that could go absolutely ballistic with Azusa. Do we have combat this time? Nothing. Well, I'm going for it. I mean, if you're counterspell deck, be counterspell deck. Hmm. Okay. Try you first. Swords, the puck. Okay. It was a swords. Still, this shouldn't be too hard. I think they chose the wrong thing. We get an elvish mystic. So we can replay? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Still not done. We want to save one passage for the opponent's turn. So we could Monstrous Fall. We could play the Mystic. Let's play the World Shaper. It opens up the monstrous fall op option for next turn, right? One, two, three, four. Or can we do it in response? We crack the passage, get a forest. It makes another forest. One, two, three. Okay. Nope, not enough. Alana and Elena. That's some burn. I just don't know if what they're doing is going to be on the power level they need to be on. Do this now. get another hit off Nyssa. Oh, we do have the, we do have all the mana. That's right. I know how magic works. Attack world shaper. Seems good. <laughs> I know, draw 13 is tempting, but right now it's my board presence. Next turn, next turn, gonna be insane.
How do we want to trigger you? I could go get Aftermath Analyst, but I'd have to th get these in the graveyard first, which I don't have a good way to do. So I don't have a way to like hit the hit a huge activation here. We're just going we're just going for it, you know? We're just going. They are filling that graveyard though. Obviously, Vorinclex is big mana. This is probably a Crater Hoof turn. And as usual, I'm just trying to find the coolest, most over-the-top efficient way to do it. Yeah, they scoop it up. So, Invasion of Ikoria, Crater of Behemoth. Brar! But in the meantime, cast a Vorinclex, make a million mana dirtling with our graveyard. Who could blame me? Pantlaza, Sun Favored. Powerful mid range deck. No ramp in this hand. It's got to go. I guess. We're on the draw. This might be way too slow. Don't yell at me if it doesn't work. But I got my Nissa, so we keeps. Cavern not very useful in this matchup. I don't think. I mean, I guess I could mana tithe. Did I get you? I mean, that's fine. It was going to hit something. Night of Stampede. Dinosaurs cost two less. How exciting! A Splunk. Making land stuff happen. Still not, no lands for the graveyard. We've got to work on that. Our opponent is into the dino plan. I respect it. Whoa! That's big. That is big. Trigger. I'm just not doing enough. Doesn't mean I won't find a way, though. Let's see what they do with their Pantalaza turn. Can you imagine if I ripped Escape Shift? Oh my god. I haven't drawn Scape Shift today at all. The Mirari's Wake after I play my Rex Sage. Love that for me. We can block this, get it back. But do I just... How close do four runners get to the win here? It depends what I draw, right? I have to draw the right thing. Opponent wants this in Command Zone, so we'll offer them that. But yeah, we could have blocked with Reclamation Sage and recovered it. That's just not making enough progress, I don't think. Okay. God, I'm a mana short of prime time. Oh, that sucks. So what do I get? I've got nothing in the graveyard. How do I get... And if I play this and it triggers this, I actually don't get another land because... Because of how the card works. Don't worry about it. Um... For five could get me a Shia. Which would get me another Ashaya, which would legend rule itself. I guess Oracle is my best bet here. Maybe I can hit a fetch land. I, yeah, I'm playing off the top. I'm playing off the top. Groundskeeper can make me a whole load of Mishra's foundries, actually. And gets a land in the graveyard. All right. I always forget about this card. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> there you go. I haven't played my land, right? So I could get back this cavern. I could get this finale. 
I mean, that's better, right? Set up for next turn. Let's do it. Please stay alive. They have Mirari's Wake. They have Pandlaza. They have a 13-13 Trample. What have I got? They have the motherfucking Tarrasque. Does this have Trample? No. God, I wish you were one bigger. Bye, Kite. <laughs> Chumpies. Go to two. Don't you do it. Oh, okay. That's fine. Four runners don't get there. What does? What gets there? What gets there? Momentous Fall is pretty amazing, and we can get in front of the Trask. Let's do it. Enter is untapped because Splunking is cool. Acclamation? Doesn't do enough. Patience. <laughs> we must stay patient. Fighting for our lives here. No big deal. And Laza returns. They get a chromy lantern. Harold's Horn? Perhaps naming Dinosaur. Just a guess. We're doing it again. Fighting my groundskeeper. I have a 2-2. Two -two. The fall. Draw 12, gain 12. Is for me. Go to one. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Can we find the line? I think it's you and escape shift. Am I a mana short of that? I'm a mana short? No. Oh wait, I can, I can just play land. And just play a land. Remember, lands are gonna enter untapped. Would be a bad time for a mana tithe, huh? Don't do it. Don't you do it. Oh my god. And they might actually stay because they think they might win. My gird. Yes! And it's all untapped. And it's all for me. They know about the finale. They know about the finale. The finale definitely wins it. But the real question is how far can I take it? Unless they have some way to counter the finale? Some fog? I don't know. I guess then we can go for altar. We just have to be careful not to completely tap out. Huh? 
on the stack. Poof them. Game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Another epic comeback for your boy. Today's Cool Kids Club random shout out goes to Dorian Snow. Dorian, your name sounds like something out of the Hunger Games, but that's cool. You're cool. Thank you for joining the Cool Kids Club and thank you very much for also, you know, basically supporting the channel. $4.99 a month, you get early access to videos like this. You can be playing the list 24 hours before other people do. You guys, you keep the channel going. I appreciate you. If anybody's interested, hit join below. This deck is awesome. It's stupid. It gets my dailies done very efficiently. It wins out of nowhere. Some people say it's broken. I won't say it doesn't break the game. If you want to watch me have some game moments that literally break the client on Magic Arena, the live streams that are members only, I did one with this deck, and there were two games that I can think of in particular that ended in absurd loops that just kind of busted everything. So yes, in that sense, the card is broken. But also what I talked about in that live stream is that it's also a check on the format. Yes, if you do nothing about this card, if you do nothing about this commander, if you're just over there doing your own thing, on turn four or five, this deck is gonna go insane. So if your deck doesn't do anything relevant by turn four or five, by either removing the commander, somehow disrupting the draw, countering a spell, or attacking to death, or executing your own combo, then you will get clowned by Mythweaver Pock. But Mythweaver Pock isn't the only deck that does this. In fact, this is becoming such a normal thing in Historic Brawl for these decks to just kind of shoot for the moon and try to win the game on turn three, four, five. I mean, three is really early, but four isn't becoming that weird. There are a lot of different ways to do it. There are a lot of different commanders. Of course, there's Paradox Engine in the format. So, yeah, uh, I don't think that the deck is degenerate. I just... And, and it's broken in a sense, but it's not its not that bad. My win rate with Pock here is 29 out of 21 with a lot of revisions. You know, I've been through a lot of versions with the deck. The most recent addition, what I'm showing you here, the most recent revisions, took me to a 13 and 5 record. That's a 72% win rate. That's very solid and incredibly powerful. But for example, my Giada deck... Uh, Sorry, my Giada deck was 16 and 8, which is 67% win rate. And uh, that's an overall better win rate right now than Mythweaver Pock, uh, not with the latest versions, but like the latest changes I made to Giada, I'm 13 and 4. So there are other commanders that keep up, and Giada plays in a more competitive queue. So don't, don't hate out the cat. It doesn't need to be nerfed. It doesn't need to be banned. Maybe it will get hell Q status, but it definitely scratches the itch for players who love this style of play. So I guess let them enjoy it. And when they start popping off and I've made like 20 mana in a turn, you can probably concede and leave if you're annoyed. Like that's reasonable. <laughs> it's going to take a while, but we're going to wind a way to win. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. You're cool.